close. We're going to go nice and chunky. Yeah, my, man, I can't help it. I, I try yeah. to go thin, but I, it never fucking I, works. I know what you mean. I always try, you know, I've tried for years to change it up, and it just doesn't. So you're saying dark, dark orange, and, dark, uh -huh. and then... Just right along the middle. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Predominantly dark, and then accents across the bottom, maybe that's here dope. and there. I like oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, many people don't know, like, Scam and Sack painted the first graffiti pieces in Austin in 1984. I mean, we're talking, what is that, 31 years ago? 31 years graffiti art has been in Austin. Mainly Scam, Sack, Rab, Rage, Tanner, Kino, all, all that first generation. What I'm saying is they deserve any area they can control. Well, I respect your ambition, Willie, but you got to have vision. Push back somehow. How are you gonna push back? You have to push back with what you got. Graffiti is just like the written word of hip hop. It's an art form, which is usually like just writing. It started out with tags, which is just somebody signing a name someplace. Evolved into throw ups, then bubble letters. From there came straight letters, which is almost the best because mostly anybody can do it. Then from there came arrows and wild styles and computer ride and stuff like that. In 1990, I met Scam. I met Al Martinez. Um, he was teaching graffiti classes at the Dowdy Arts Center. My mother worked there, and she said, hey, you know, there's this graffiti artist. I want you to come meet him. Um, as a child growing up, there wasn't one day in my life with my brother that I don't remember him drawing, period. For me, it started out in uh, junior high. Instead of doing your classwork, I'm uh, doodling on the paper, on the covers. From there, it, it just took off. A lot of times, uh, when I didn't feel like getting in trouble, I stayed home and drew. And uh, I guess that's how I ended up here. Somebody in my neighborhood was drawing block letters, and we started drawing that. And then I wrote my name on the wall in 84, and I liked it. And then I wrote it somewhere else, and then somewhere else. East Austin was a poor, poor man's working neighborhood and the poor working family's neighborhood. You know, so you had all these kids living together, you know, within a few blocks of each other, or going to slightly different schools or whatnot. There was artwork around. It wasn't graffiti. But there was a lot of artwork. Uh, I want to say Raul Valdez did a, a Pan Am. There was one that was there, the Lincoln Juarez building where the IHOP is now. When I first saw it, that was the biggest and the most colorful mural. And I was like, damn. Somebody said, hey, there's this other kid, he writes graffiti, he's better than you. And I thought, no, no that, that's impossible. It'd be in uh, the summer of 84. And uh, yeah, wow. So we battled it out, he won, and uh, I went to his house later on. We hung out the next day, and we hung out every day after that. You know, go to school in the morning, in the afternoon, grab my markers and paint, go home, eat dinner, as soon as my mom falls asleep, bam, I'm out the back door. You know, as long as I'm home before she wakes up at 4 o'clock, I'm good. I was in the alleys, a lot of alleys on Willow Street, in Canterbury, uh, you know, just going and painting on fences. Uh, I remember our earliest first one was a, a Charlie Brown doing a head spin. I was like, well, damn, if that's part of hip-hop, I'm already breakdancing. I want to be a part of that, so. Not only did 
the kids from the south side come to the east side to break dance battle, we got to hit up walls in their neighborhood and then burn back off. You know, you'd start seeing Robert's work, you'd start seeing uh, Scam's work, you'd start seeing uh, Tanner and Raymond's, you know, artwork going up. And so you, people started noticing there's something a little bit cooler than just, you know, gang stuff going on. Easter of 1990, there was a gang shooting uh, right at Chicano Park. And at the same time, I was working to do a mural at Metz Park. So what I did, instead of doing my mural, uh, I asked these guys if they wanted to get together and do a mural. He had his two cents in about making every mural a theme, you know, stay in school, stop the violence, uh, don't drink and drive. They didn't want us to get in trouble. They said, you know what, you guys have a talent. Y'all spray paint, let's use that so that, you know, so y'all won't get in trouble and maybe y'all can help other kids from getting in trouble. Of course, we all thought we were graffiti masters then. We all can do it. Ooh, man. That's some pieces I did. I, I wouldn't show my damn dog. <laughs> and there were some really nice ones. It's usually the nice ones that go first. I was so excited and anxious to even meet these guys that being a helper, buffing their wall, being their caddy, carrying their crates, you know, it was an honor. It was kind of like the, the graduation party for the graffiti writers of my generation. Wow, you know, all of a sudden you had to be mentors and beginning for, for one generation, but you know, the young kids we were, when we first writing the 14, 15 year olds, by then we had had children, some had gotten married, you know, by then I was already married. And you had to kind of focus on what you were going to do in life. Those murals mean a lot. Um, as far as I know, that's some of Al Martinez's last work standing. And um, I would hate to see it painted over. Our family moved to Austin shortly after his death. And it was crazy because it was like the minute that I moved back into the same neighborhood that I grew up in, I saw murals up in memory of my brother. Because what it really is, is it's about the people in East Austin. And their backgrounds are reflected in a big way when it comes to graffiti art. So bringing it back to life and keeping it there um, is extremely important to not just me, but to a lot of, lot of people. And we have to show that you can't come in our hood and, and demolish a piñata store and then come and then paint over a mural that's a loteria that we To know that you were involved in something that had become bigger than you, that, that had carried on, you know, and, um, yeah, let's say, it's cool.